Welcome to another episode of TJ's Chainsaw Restoration. Well, as you guys can see, the bench is empty. And, uh, I guess I'm just, you know, gonna have to start looking for another saw to do. I mean, I'm, uh, I got the 620 running. As you guys can see, the Pioneer 620. And I've been uh, starting to soda blast parts for the uh, 770 gear drive stick shift home light. Uh, but now i got to find a good paint primer paint and clear that I want to use for that so boy I guess I'm just gonna have to find another saw guys you know what I mean if I don't find another saw I'm not gonna have any updates you know and oh wait a minute <sighs> until I got this one <laughs> this here is a 1957 Pioneer model RA uh, this one was actually local um, local as in about I want to say 30 miles from me um, this one here was owned by a logger and as you can see by the weird kind of weird uh, dog setup if you want to call it a dog it really isn't um, it's basically just a piece of angle iron and a square the guy used it for milling um, had a nice little bar on it I don't have it on currently but definitely a later bar this is a Windsor a Windsor bar. Um, anyway, just a cute little bar, about 20 inch. And uh, of course, the 404 chain, which is shot. This chain is shot beyond belief, actually. So, just be scrapping this. Um, but, so it's been years since the saw was ran. Um, the fuel lines rock hard, and I uh, haven't even been in the carburetor, but it does turn over. And it's got great compression. I pulled the spark plug out, and uh, the piston cylinder looked great. Um, so I'm going to be pulling the carb on it and doing the same thing I did the 620. Uh, new fuel lines, gaskets, a new full, uh, ceiling, a new glass bowl gasket, and new spark plug. It does have spark too, which is awesome. And one thing I wanted to show you guys. So the the one thing about these model RAs that caught my attention <clears throat> was this right here. Look at that factory dual exhaust um, just the overall style of the saw to me is pretty stinking cool I just it's a big honking saw and uh, I just fell in love with it but the main thing that caught my attention was the fact it came with dual exhaust from the factory this is one of the only that I know one of the only saws I know of that actually came with dual exhaust why I have no idea um, it would be interesting to actually put a single exhaust on there and see you know maybe if it creates too much back pressure if it loses power um, but these were around 100 and I think 100.7 or 101.7 cc so actually a little bit less power than the super 620 the super 620 was uh, 103 but these were made in 57 the uh, super 620 was 62 to 64 so there's a little bit of a, an age gap there but anyway so we're gonna start working on this thing as I've got Parts in. I've got um, fuel line. Whoops. I've got fuel lines and carburetor kits and all that. So, um, <laughs> mosquito. But anyway, so that's one thing about my shop. I get mosquitoes every once in a while. Um, but I got a temporary carb kit. It's a gasket set. Doesn't come with a needle or a seat. Uh, so I'm gonna try that. Hope, hoping the carb's not too bad. This thing actually did run a little bit on Prime. So we're gonna try the get basic gasket kit and if that works out okay we'll run it for a while um, but this saw and the Super 620 are going to get full kits in them eventually um, I'm just waiting to you know finances all that wonderful stuff so I will be putting full kits on them so that way I know the carbs are good so alright let's get to work and we'll bring you guys back in a bit alright well we took the Model RA into the shop today and got it all cleaned up um, it was pretty filthy bunch of sawdust everywhere when I uh, got it and uh, I got that all taken care of just had a pile of dust just stuck up all in here got that all cleaned up and got all the sawdust that was built up off of there and everything so now what we're gonna do is uh, cut some new fuel line for it um, I've got a carb kit a basic carb kit right here I'm going to rebuild the carburetor with. It's a Tillotson uh, TLDG5HL 
and then guys if you're ever wondering so the float bowl or the not float bowl the glass bowl on these the steel ceiling ring this part number is a perfect fit and it works really well um, I used that ceiling ring on the 620 and it sealed right up so we're just rocking a Bosch spark plug we're gonna use some uh, Tigon fuel line and what else do I got in a part number 00003503504 still fuel filter so alrighty well we're gonna start tearing into this thing and uh, we'll bring you guys back Oh, well, before I get, let you guys go, hold on. I had to put a new rope in it because I ended up snapping the old one that was on there. So, but I got this all cleaned up and got the new rope in it. All right. Get you guys another update soon. All right. So, I got as much of the gunk out of the glass bowl as I can. It actually looks worse than it really does. And went ahead and cut a new fuel line. Got the filter on the end. Got rid of this old gasket. Made myself a new one. Definitely ain't perfect, but it'll work. This is about what the other one looked like on the 620. So we're going to fit that on and get the uh, starter cover back on. And then uh, I'll show you guys a little bit about carb rebuilding. So I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. So we got the we got everything bolted back down. And we got the new gasket in there, as you can see. And so now I wanted to just show you guys. So this is a still fuel cap ceiling ring and uh, showed you guys in the beginning of the video what the part number was but the cool thing is is it just fits right down in there and it's a perfect fit now make sure the glass bowl is clean set the glass bowl on there slide this on spin that down get that good and tight you do want to you have to have a good seal on these Otherwise, uh, it's going to cause the solder run lean. So, putting new gaskets in that area is definitely never, um, a, <laughs> never a bad thing by any means. So, we did also get the fuel line cut that runs along from this nipple to this over here, wherever it is. So, we got that out of the way. But, you know, look at the old gunk that was in there. This was the other ceiling ring. It actually was broken. So, yep, good to have all that out of there. So, now for carb rebuilding. Um, as you can see, this diaphragm is pretty well wasted. It's stretched out and it's stiff. And these old fuel pump gaskets are all stretched out and just stiff as a board. Um, so, we're definitely, it's definitely a good idea to get new gaskets for that. And I'm hoping this old gasket here is going to seal again because. My kit didn't come with one of those, and I didn't have another steel ceiling ring at the shop. So we're going to clean those up and hope for the best. But we're going to flush all this off with brake cleaner. Um, the kit didn't come with a needle, but I'm hoping this one's going to seal. We're going to take that out, clean it out real good, and we'll hope for the best. Um, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't seal, or if it still isn't running right, I'm going to order the full kit. This was just a small kit to that I had at the shop to use, so without having to order another one. But worst case scenario, if we have to order the full kit, we'll do that. So we're gonna get to work on this uh, carb, and then we'll bring you guys back again. And like a crazy person, or the crazy person that I am, I forgot to turn the camera on. Uh, <laughs> so we rebuilt the carburetor. Got it all cleaned up on the inside. Um, getting into it, I realized now it'd be actually better to take it apart and soda blast it because uh, there were some spots in there that I had to scrub. So if the carb doesn't work well enough, then I will take it all back apart and soda blast it and then put a better kit in there while I'm at it. So the carb's rebuilt. Now we just got to get it back together. I got to fix my starter problems. So. Wasn't doing that before, so either I put didn't put something back together right, or something's binding in there that wasn't binding, and now is for whatever reason. Um, they seem to always work better when they're dirty. I don't know why. The minute you clean them, they don't want to work. But I guess that's the, the name of the game with these old beasts. So 
Well, the next video you guys are going to see, or the next shot of this video, is of this old beast being fired for the first time. So, see you guys when that happens. All right. So, first startup of the Pioneer Model RA, after who knows how many years. Um, got the carb rebuilt, got it primed, and then um, got the starter working as best I can. It's going to need some new friction shoes. It's actually not a Paul style, it's a friction shoe style, so um, can't get them from Pioneer anymore, so I got a set of still friction shoes on the way because they're pretty much the same thing. So, yeah, see if this old baby will run again after, after many years. I heard something. That is just too awesome right there. Hey, you know what? How about rocking some duels? How would you guys like that? Maybe rocking two chainsaws at once. Let me get you guys set back over here. And we'll, uh... Just because two old Pioneer saws running at once is awesome, let's do it. And this will be a cold start on the, uh, the 620. It's been a couple days, so... Let's fire this old 620 it. Don't want to do it in the shop or I'll smoke the shop out. Let's see. Two poles, I love it.
Oh man, yeah, this one's running out of fuel. I didn't put put just a little bit of VP fuel in it, so I think that's what our problem is. Plus the slant is also another issue. I need to have it level or have more fuel in the tank. So, man, that's just so awesome, guys. Two old pioneers brought back to life. Would you believe this 1957 is 60, 60, yeah, 60 years old. <laughs> I mean, can't you believe it? 60 years old and still running like a top to this day. I mean, what other, what other saws? I, show me any of this other new stuff that would last 50, 60, 70 years. Old home lights, I mean, oh, guys, it's just awesome. I mean, look at these. All old vintage, vintage saws. Even this one's going to be brought back to life. That's 775. Original top end, still running good. That old zip saw, the 50s saw, still runs like a top on the original top end. That old Super XL is almost like brand new and it's from the 70s. That's from, I believe, the 80s, late 90s, and also the 70s. And they, this one's been rebuilt, of course. But I mean, it's just, oh, these old saws that are just, <laughs> they last forever. I mean, I guess partly because, the, you know, that RA was meant to run at 12 to 1. Straight 30, 12 to 1, and boy, has it got enough carbon to prove it. So, <laughs> it's just so awesome, guys. Well, that concludes this video of TJ's Chainsaw Restoration, guys. Man, it's just, it's just awesome. It's so cool to see two vintage dinosaurs still breathing life. Um... We're going to probably hook them both up with brand new bars and chains. The original bar for this one seems to be okay. At the bare, bare minimum, I'm going to get a new chain for it. This one here, I'm thinking of setting up with a 32-inch uh, organ bar uh, with a 404 tip. And, of course, it'll be 63-gauge 404. So, um, these were meant... That was the longest guide bar that they supplied with these back in the day. It was a 32. And I figured, you know what? It's a big, heavy saw and it deserves a long bar. I'm not going to be cutting too often with it, so it's really not going to put a lot of strain on the saw. It won't be like I'm using it every day with a big long bar. A lot of people recommended sticking with the 20, but when you got a saw that you know weighs 30 pounds, in my opinion, if it's got 100 cc, put a nice bar on it. Um, it just it looks better too. It always looked funny, maybe because I'm a West Coast guy, but it always looked funny to me having a big old honking dinosaur of a saw and a cute little bar on it about that long so you know um we're gonna rock this one with a little bit of a longer bar i'm still deciding i might do a 28 um but i would love to do a 32 32 just seems to be a good general length uh, i mean it's it's got a lot of torque they weren't fast but they have a lot of torque so i have no pro i have no doubts this thing will pull it just fine i might uh just go ahead and get a chain for the 20 see how it does that you know, and then compare, but like I said, the saw is going to be used for enjoyment and just preserved and eventually restored. So, well, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for commenting. Uh, if you're a new person watching, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future of these pioneers and also more videos on the future projects. The Home Light 770 restoration is underway and we will be picking up progress on that soon. So, again, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.